everyone, we are going to talk about Halloween this evening. For If you guys don't know me, then that's sad. I know you. I am Kristen Ostrander from MommyIncome.com, and we are here with the Amazon Files show that we do every Monday night, and we are so glad that you are here with us live. We're going to talk all about, ready? Halloween. <laughs> Great. We're going to talk about how to capitalize on Halloween for this holiday season this year. And we're going to tell you what to sell, where to get it, all that kind of stuff. There's no fluff. There's no anything. This is just personal um, things that I've sold, things that I see being sold, things that are in the stores, what you can find, bundles and all that kind of stuff. So let me know, everybody. Every, I have to ask you because Amy is kind of here. She's on vacation, so we can't expect her to do live shows from vacation. Plus, she's kind of in the middle of nowhere with no really internet service, but you might see her popping in the chat because although she has um, a little bit of internet access, it's not enough to do live streaming. So if you want some show notes, We've got show notes this time, so be excited about that. Go to mommyincome.com slash Halloween to get tonight's show notes. So we're going to talk about how to capitalize on Halloween to jumpstart your Q4. And if you had your inbox anywhere near you yesterday, you got a little special note from us about a Q4 promo, but we're not going to talk about that. Check your inbox. If you're not on our email list, go to mommyincome.com and get our free Amazon resource guide, jump on our email list because you're going to miss out on a really cool promo if you don't. So again, our code word for this evening, people have been asking about code words lately because to get in the Mommy Income Facebook group, you need a code word and that is Halloween. So make sure you do that as well here. And I am going to pull up some statistics for you because you know, as Kristen Ostrander here, I am a data nerd and I love being a data nerd, and so I looked up some statistics for you as well. Okay, so some statistics. You want some stats, you guys? Let me tell you this right now. Fun facts from your data nerd. Halloween celebration plans. I'm gonna pull up this chart for you. <laughs> we'll see, right? Because you know how my screen share is wonky. Um, I'm gonna show you this chart. I squint your eyes, I hope you can read it. Uh, this is some fun facts for you. Um, okay, look, this is the Halloween, people that plan on Celebrating Halloween, okay? So people that hand out candy, 70% of people hand out candy. Decorating their home and yard, 48% of people. Um, people that dress in costume, 47% of people. Carve a pumpkin, 45%. Throwing a party or attending a party, 34% of people. Now these are people that celebrate Halloween. Take children trick-or-treating, almost 30%. Visit a haunted house, 20%. And dressing your pets in costume. So. Look at all those statistics right there. That just tells you a lot of things. It tells you that people are spending a lot of money on Halloween. It is actually the second highest grossing holiday season in um, the United States at the very least. Now I'm gonna show you another chart. So again, here, okay, look. When people plan to celebrate Halloween, when do they start shopping? Okay, now for Amazon sellers, you have to think about this. 29% of people start shopping in September. And only 5% people start before September. So that means you have to have your stuff on the shelf in September. So that means like September 1st, that's only a couple of weeks away here. And then really they start hitting hard the first two weeks of October. That means your items are purchased on the shelf and there. Now the last two weeks of October, of course there's always last minute shoppers, so the 20% fall in there. But as you can see this chart is 30%, a good chunk of people start in September and then finish off the first two weeks of October. Why is that important? That's important because that's when you have to think two weeks ahead of time, three weeks, four weeks ahead of time and buying your stuff so that you can get it there, get it sold while these people are shopping. So you have to think about that for you. A lot of people are celebrating Halloween and they, they want to buy your stuff and they want to buy it from Amazon. And although those are last minute shoppers, you still have to think about getting your stuff in there and get it ready for sale. So when does that mean you have to start shopping? I'll give you a hint. Today. You have to start shopping now. I was actually in the store today picking up something for my son and there's a whole aisle of Halloween costumes. I actually almost bought a mask to wear tonight because I thought that'd be kind of fun, but then I was like, nah. Um, I'm sure I have something in a Halloween bucket somewhere, but I, honestly, I'm just starting to think about Halloween. And we have some stuff on the shelf already selling for Halloween season. So the time 
is right now. Because then by the time you start thinking about it, people are already starting to buy and you have to have it there. Now there is room for that 24% or whatever that was of last minute shoppers, but the time for retailers is right now. So let's begin with what people start with, what to buy, where to get it, and where to send it in. Um, so here's what we do. First of all, don't forget fall and harvest decorations. This is one of the things that we start with. Wreaths in the fall colors, orange, yellow, you guys seen them all out there. They're leafy, green, not greens, but the orange, yellow, and maroon type colors. Think about fall harvest decorations because some people pull out their fall harvest. They do Halloween for a short time and then they pull out the fall harvest again for um, the Thanksgiving time and things like that. So don't th think about that. We're talking and don't worry. This is in your show notes, right? So you don't have to feel like you have to write down everything I say. I know I'm a fast talker. I love Halloween. Um, I'm, I'm a fast talker, but seriously, it's just ideas in your head. So if you get an idea in your head, get your Sharpies, write them all down. Yeah, this is my wonderful Sharpie cup. Um, but then you'll get to print your show notes. So you won't have to think about jotting all this down right away. You won't miss it. And now there's always a replay. So, you know, there's that. <laughs> okay. So you're talking about doormats, welcome mats that say happy harvest, uh, thankful, grateful, blessed is like a big saying this year and was last year for, um, decorating signs, wall art, wall decor, uh, throw blankets and pillows. It's gonna, believe it or not, you people in Texas are laughing at me, but believe it or not, it's going to be, um, starting to get a little bit more chilly and people are going to want to wear, uh, have blankets and things like that. And, and you know, there's, I'm like giving away the Q4 farm here, by the way, this is like, you're welcome. Um, also, don't forget people are going to start tailgating and they need stuff like that for that too. So, you know, there's a freebie for you. <laughs> Kids, 50 degrees in New Hampshire last night. Oh, that's evening chill is fine. 50 degrees during the day. Mm, I'm not buying that. I'm still all full fledged summer right now. So thank you very much. Okay. So next is uh, Halloween decorations. Okay. Now, this is where a lot of people kind of get stopped up and we are going to address the whole lighting situation because apparently very recently Amazon has decided that you cannot uh, send in certain string lights, uh, lighting, different things like that. They're putting it as hazmat. So you want to get the rules straightened away before you start sending in things like that. I don't want you to waste your money. But in previous years, We've sold a lot of indoor outdoor lights, orange, purple, white, rope lights. There's specific types that they're looking for, so ask them. Yeah, someone said they got three restrictions on lights last week alone. Excuse me, I don't have Amy to give me a break from talking, so I have to just take them every now and then. Inactive SKUs, that's right, Amy, thanks for sharing that. Um, so when you're talking about lighting, check on it. But if everybody's restricted on lighting, you know what this means? Merchant fulfill. Um, you can merchant fulfill things. You just can't send them to the warehouse. So don't exclude those. That's an opportunity to make money. So don't exclude those types of products when you're thinking about that. Um, you know, as far as lighting goes, it's just it's just what the, it is. What it is. If you can't sell lights and things like that. Um, then sell them merchant fulfilled. The only reason they're restricted is because of the warehouse issues. So make sure that you do that that way. Okay, so black lights. Check again for restrictions on these. If in, when in doubt, ask or look and see if everybody else has um, available FBA inventory. If they do, great. And that means that you can probably sell it. But there's other things like projectors, movie projectors. People like to use those floating projective lights of like witches and ghouls and goblins and everything else. They had them at Christmas. I can think you can get those at like Lowe's and Home Depot. They project little like flying figures all over the place and they're pretty cool. We sold a ton of those in years past and those seem to do really well. Um, hanging decorations are huge. Um, there's a lot of teachers that, that do classroom decorations, so they don't want it to be too scary, a little bit more family friendly, but it's, um, it's just one of those things that you can this sell to decorate all kinds of different things. So you're talking classrooms, sometimes people do stores, offices, things like that, and they want that stuff a lot of times before the holiday. So they wanna have it up long enough for people to enjoy it. Even retail stores have decorations that they get from other places. So thinking about that, again, doormats, door covers, window clings, anything with skeletons and witches and ghouls and zombies zombies is so huge like in the past few years so making sure that you're looking at that fog machines noise machines or even like 
creepy music that they play. Um, people have that. We see people do Halloween huge. Anybody in your area, do they do Halloween huge like they do it here? I mean, whole street blocks, everybody's decked out. Everybody has music playing and lights, and it's like a big ordeal. It's almost like if you've seen Christmas with the Cranks when the whole entire street does like the whole decoration thing, and then they're mad because they're like, free Frosty, because they decided to, you know, stop being um, in Christmas or what I stopped doing Christmas or whatever. It's kind of like that around here. Like people go crazy over Halloween and everybody dresses up and there's parties and there's, you know, themes and there's forest walks and, Oh, don't even get me started on the haunted houses. We'll get there because there's some money to be made there. But just saying, there's a lot of crazy Halloween stuff going on. And, um, Okay, so we have a question. What about the battery restrictions? I have not yet run into battery restrictions myself. Um, they ask you if it contains anything, but most of the time, if it's in within a package, it can't go air. So that, that's the only battery restrictions that I've heard of. Um, Okay, and then uh, Cynthia asks, she's a grandmother of twins. Oh, how fun. And she's starting time for Halloween. Yes, Halloween gives you enough time to turn money over so you can make money for Christmas. Um, so that's something that you, we, yes, absolutely, start today, start now. Um, and let's see, Sheila wants to know, how do we tell the difference between an item that is restricted like lights but that you can sell merchant fulfilled versus an item that is restricted all the way for you as a seller? Um, well, the matter, the truth of the matter is if it's restricted as a brand, you won't be able to sell it at all. If it's restricted like as in hazmat, then you'll be able to tell if it's not able to send it to the warehouse, it will still let you list it for sale. So if it's not letting you restrict it, list it for sale, it will tell you that it's restricted. So you need to pay attention to those. Um, if you went to add a product or add a product to the catalog in your seller central and you went to add something that was restricted before you went live with it, it will say, I'm sorry, this is restricted. You can't sell this. So just keep that in mind for that. Again, it's double and triple checking on things when in doubt. Uh, unfortunately you asked them am I buying things on sale or at full price that's a good question Kathy I'm buying everything wholesale mostly um, but I do get a lot of candy stuff when I'm selling candy and food products I get those on sale at all the major drug stores and grocery stores you know three for five you know different sales and things like that we we've done candy chocolate in the past and we're getting to that that's like the next category we're gonna talk about um, coming up but um, yeah, look for sales, but even in the meantime, sometimes at full price, remember your Amazon customer. Remember that they want fast and they want easy and they want convenient. They're not always looking for the super rock bottom price. Sometimes they're just looking to, to add it to the cart on their lunch break so they don't have to think about going to the grocery store on the way home to buy Halloween candy. So it's just one of those things. It's more of a convenience purchase rather than a, I want the best. The, the price savvy shoppers don't always shop on Amazon because they know it's not always the best price, but it's more convenient. It's easy. They don't have to go shopping. They don't have to make an extra trip. So you're selling convenience there and that comes at a premium. So yay. <laughs> okay. This is the next category is, um, maybe my favorite moneymaker, but definitely not my favorite personally because I'm not into this, but, um, uh, props for haunted houses. Now, now is the time to send this kind of stuff in because people need to prep for their haunted houses that usually open the second week of September and go all the way through um, the end of October. I've seen a couple, I had to, I Googled, um, caution, if you Google or Google image haunted house or even look it up, it up on Pinterest, careful, your pretty little eyes might be damaged. I've seen some things that were absolutely horrifying. I don't, I'm not into haunted houses. Lots of people are though. So they can buy all the props from you on Amazon. Um, it's a lot of the different things that you see on there. Spiders, spider webs, wall decor, signs, sheets for ghosts and things, any sort of hanging witch decorations, faux blood. I know a lot of them make their own, but sometimes they use the makeup stuff. Torn, tattered blankets and sheets. Now, don't forget there's other platforms to sell on. eBay is huge for Halloween. As a matter of fact, that's one of my heaviest holidays I participate in on eBay because I like to shop um, all year long garage sale, well, all season long for us Michiganders, um, garage sales and things like that, buying costumes, costume props, things like that. And I sell them on eBay and they just fly because people know what they're getting on eBay, on Amazon. They kind of expect this brand new in the box type 
shopping, but on eBay, people know, hey, you know, this is a half torn bloody foot from last year. Um, you know, and they somebody else used it in their haunted house or selling it on eBay, it still does well. So um, make sure you're paying attention to those things. Now, here's another thing that again, it's like I don't know if this is shameful or not to talk about these things. So, um, but um, body parts like plastic doll body parts legs arms ba a lot of people use like doll faces and like make them look creepy in haunted houses um, you can get things at hobby stores you can get them in your broken kids toy box <laughs> but seriously people buy plastic body parts arms legs n fingers are uh, hands feet and they like bloody them up and put them in their haunted house props it's like a thing I didn't know this was a thing recently, but I was doing research for you guys, and this is what I came up with. And I'm like, ah! But I know that, like, at Hobby Lobby, you can buy, like, a whole bag of doll arms and legs for, like, $2. I mean, they're only, like, this big, but still, like, if you can make money on that on Amazon by selling them as haunted house props, think outside the box, you guys. People buy this stuff on a regular basis. Ask somebody that goes to haunted house. Yeah, it's creepy, but... People do it. I mean, I, I had to shut down my Google images after I looked up some of this haunted house stuff because I was horrified at some things. They take like these life-size dolls. Like you guys ever remember like Chucky? What was that? Like the Chucky dolls, but they make them like that. They're horrifying. Um, anyway, I don't like haunted houses. <laughs> but anyway, pla uh, you know, RIP headstones and coffins, skulls, creepy music. Look on Pinterest again with caution. Um, so it's just one of those things. Oh boy. But yeah, it's just one of those things I don't love. But hey, it sells on Amazon, so more power to ya. Okay, there's a question. Are parties big at Halloween? Paper plates, cups, napkins, and what is the a good number of guests? Halloween parties are huge. Um, as you can see, like if I I mean I'm not pulling up the chart again, but I'll pull it up for my own sake. There was like 34% of people participating in Halloween are going to throw a party or attend a party. Um, I'm not so sure if people use all that stuff in general. Like, yeah, any party, you know, if you go to a tailgate party, your plastic cups and, you know, things like that. We're going to, there's actually a section in here. You're jumping ahead of me a little bit, but uh, we'll get to that too. Um, but, you know, parties are big. We'll, we'll address the party question when it comes up in a category. So um, just hold your horses a little bit. I do want to get to costumes. Of course, right? Of course we do costumes at Halloween. But I want you to still think about outside the box of costumes, okay? Yes, regular costume sell. Actually, they're in Costco right now. I, if you go to Costco, they have decent prices for costumes at Costco. Now, this is where you can't get paranoid or panicky and start dropping your prices obviously a lot of people shop two weeks before halloween especially for costumes costumes biggest window is about two weeks before halloween actually starts and remember all shapes and sizes adults men women couples families um there's a lot of family costumes again pinterest and keepa keep keepa and camel 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 are going to be your best friend when it comes to researching costumes and don't forget your pets. 16.2% of people that participate in Halloween will dress up their pets. Now, that doesn't seem like a lot to you, but there's a lot of millions of people that participate in Halloween, and 16% of them have pets. I don't even have a pet. Well, I just got a cat, yeah. But, you know, dressing up their dogs and taking them out. I, see, I saw a whole family of Star Wars people, and then they dressed up the dog as Yoda, and it was the funniest thing. So people do that. Yeah, pet costumes in all shapes and sizes. Uh, there's big dogs and little dogs and purse dogs and Great Danes and you name it. There's tons of dogs and all kinds of different pets. I mean, I'm sure people probably dress up their cats too. Poor little kitties. Um, <laughs> and superheroes and princesses for kids are still number one. As of 2016, they're still number one. They outweigh everything else. But that I'm saying that to say that you don't always want to jump on what's popular because although those are the most popular things, they also have the most competition. So make sure you're thinking outside of that. Look on Pinterest. There's a, there's, I mean, I got lost in the black hole of cute Pinterest costumes the other day for babies. Oh my, but we're going to get to that because it's part of my research for you. You're welcome. Um, <laughs> so costume accessories, right? I mean, we know, I'm not going to belabor the costume thing unless you guys have specific questions because it's kind of like a, hey, do you know? You feel like Amazon sells most of the costumes. How often do they sell out of the most popular ones? Uh, all the time. Um, 
they you have you know the popular most popular shapes and sizes amazon doesn't want to get stuck with anything either and princesses and superheroes actually sell year round not just side halloween so make sure you're paying attention to that it's the it's the extracurricular costumes that come and go as like a curve of like a here's halloween okay it's over um princesses my daughter would dress up excuse me my daughter would dress up in a halloween princess costume every day of the week and if my son was still four years old Oh, don't even get me started. He had a different costume for every day of the week and he wore them out. He was a dress up kid for sure. So those things don't really go out of style. They just kind of keep hanging around and they just keep making new ones. I mean, Star Wars, is that ever going to go away? Probably not. So you think about those things, but yeah, the common sizes of things like that. Um, in order to get away from maybe Amazon's domination of costumes is the next category, which is costume accessories, okay? So you buy the deluxe costume, right, with the kids, and it comes with, like, you know, the the muscle chest Batman, and, you know, it covers the boots and everything else, even has a mask. But that's all it has. Like, how do you know it doesn't want this super cool utility belt that you can get at Target for $14.99? Just saying. Uh, can you tell I've done this before? And you bundle this super awesome costume with this super awesome accessory belt, and bam, you got yourself $69.99 worth of costume there that Amazon can't get on. So it's Batman Plus. What can you add to make your costume more valuable and then no competition? For example, a few years ago, my daughter was uh, Dorothy. If you know anything about Dorothy from Wizard of Oz, you know that it comes with the dress and the little hair ties, and that's all. No ruby slippers, no toto basket, no anything else. But they sell all that separately somewhere else. No slippers, no anything. So we had to buy the whole costume with the ruby slippers and the little toto basket because, you know, who, what's Dorothy without Toto? So you're putting that stuff together in one bundle package. Now, shoes get a little tricky because not always, you're not always the same size in a body costume that you are with shoes. So that's a word of caution with shoes. But sell the shoes separately. You never know what could happen. Or sell the accessory pack with the shoes and the dress can come separately because it could be a different size. So be careful with shoes because you never know what size someone's going to be. You can round about it, but some kids have bigger feet, some smaller feet, so that might not work out. But you're talking props, swords, um, every superhero has some sort of something to carry into battle. You know, with Captain America, it's the shield, and with Thor, it's that Thor hammer, and, you know, lightsabers for Star Wars people, and they come in different colors, and they don't come with these accessories, so you can always add them. Uh, wigs, masks, makeup, hair accessories, face paint specialty shoes, go-go boots, and, you know, a lot of adult Halloween costumes have tons of accessories to go with them. So look at all that. Go to your nearest Halloween store, Party City, wherever that stuff is, and look around at all the stuff that's there, and then go to the dollar store and see if you can find it for cheaper. <laughs> I mean, and then make a bundle together, because a lot of times people don't want to have to spend that much money on Halloween, but the truth is, supply and demand, right? If you want to buy a, an adult Halloween costume in the middle of October, you're going to pay 70, 80, $90 for it. Um, so good for you, bad for the customer. I don't know, but some people pay it. And then that leads me to the people that don't want to pay it and instead want to do it yourself, right? I want to make my own costume because it's cheaper. Okay. This is where you capitalize on Amazon with that too. Let me show you how. On Pinterest, Look for homemade Halloween costumes and type in your category, men, women, children, babies, whatever. And then look at what they make. And first of all, you're going to get ultra super cuteness coming out. So beware that you might stick in this black hole for a while. I was, and it was adorable. The one with like the little, little two, oh, there's just two babies that look like old couples. And they put these little things <laughs> to die for. I wish you would save the picture. I mean, twin babies that look like old people. It was hysterical. And they're absolutely adorable. But guess what? they have to buy those supplies from somewhere. So you can sell the supplies on Amazon. You can sell material and glue guns and paint and tool and do it yourself, you know, different stuff that they have that, you know, you can get it at Joann's or Michael's or Hobby Lobby or those places, or you can get it on Amazon. How convenient. And you can look at the supply list. So you go and you see all the cute little costumes and you're like, Oh, how do I make that? You look at the supply list as a seller. 
So you're like, oh, I could stock up on some glue. I could stock up on some paint. I could stock up on glue guns. And oh, there's this, you know, you can sell material or specific types of material. Now, mind you, I have not actually sold material. So I don't know what that looks like on Amazon or if it's even allowed, but it's allowed on Etsy. It's allowed on eBay. It's allowed on other platforms. You can pick, you pick and choose. Hey, we don't limit ourselves to just Amazon. There's money to be made everywhere, right? So think about the do it yourself type stuff. Look at the supplies that people will need. Maybe it's just a basic cape that they're going to turn into their Superman cape that they want for cheap. You can buy it at the dollar store, sell it to them for $9.99 and they don't have to pay $17.99 somewhere else. So you see, it's a win-win for everybody. So, um, what did you post? <laughs> Old people, toddler costumes. I know the ones that from up are the cutest ones ever. The movie, the Disney movie up or Pixar movie up. They have like Mr. Fredrickson with like the balloons and like, oh my gosh, so cute. <laughs> anyway, I know I love baby and ho kids Halloween costumes. I don't really particularly like the scary ones. That's not me. If it's you, awesome. But I like the super cute ones or creative ones. My dad used to make my sister and I, um, really cool co Halloween costumes, like homemade, you know, back in the day, it was all homemade. We were dice. He made us these big cardboard boxes. We wore all black underneath and we wore cardboard boxes with dice, all, you know, the dice dots. And my sister and I were a pair of dice. Like it was sweet. Um, we thought we were the coolest. Um, anyway, so that was just, I love that kind of stuff. Cute stuff. Uh, and so people have to make stuff like that. So you're talking craft paper and just different stuff. Be creative. Be different than everybody else. Anyone can go to Walmart and buy a costume and try to resell it. Be better than that. Like sell the whole kit and caboodle. Your Halloween, you know, extravaganza decoration kit with this, 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 and this. Bam. Halloween in a box. You're welcome. Um, okay. Moving on to parties. I love parties. Woohoo! Um, somebody invite me to their Halloween party. I'm so dressing up. I don't know what yet, but my mom year my mom one year bought a pig nose and just wrapped herself in a blanket. <laughs> that was just super funny because she always comes with us with the kids and stuff. So she's like, Yeah, I'm a pig in a blanket. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, anyway, go, parties, okay? Lots of people have parties. Kids, teens, adults, all kinds of stuff. So what do we do for parties? Don't even get me started on Pinterest. Halloween themed food, you guys. There's all kinds of Halloween themed food that people make and they make traditional stuff and they turn it into Halloween type stuff. So Rice Krispie Treats, Halloween style. Um, you know, cakes and cookies and cute little cupcakes that, I mean, all you got Pinterest moms out there, awesome. Let me eat one of those cupcakes. Um, all things like that. You're talking serving dishes and platters and table covers and prizes for door for parties or sorry, I just lost my train of thought for a second. Oh yeah. Um, games. Everybody, a lot of people play games at Halloween parties. So there's prizes to be bought. So you can make prize type stuff and you can make, you know, hostess gifts and different, they make wine bottle covers. So your wine that now looks like witch's brew, blah, blah, blah. I'm sure there's probably an actual wine called that. I don't know, but, um, you know, that's the stuff that people are using. So they just put, or they put the little paper things around the two liters and it says, you know, like a red pop would be like, you know, goblin blood and something. I don't know what it is, but I've seen all this stuff because I shop a lot. So what is serving dishes, tableware, favors, Halloween themed food, um, red solo cups or orange solo cups. You know, people have parties. You know what else I see? I see people trick or treating with wagons and in their wagons, depending on the weather, they either have a cooler full of beer or they have thermoses full of coffee and they pull their kids in the wagon and they let them because we have some big neighborhoods. And the kids get out and run up and trick or treat to the door, but they pull kind of the little babies in the wagons. It's a little big family affair. So making things convenient. You could, did you know if it's your listing, you can change the wording of the listing to make it um, Halloween friendly and then change it back after Halloween? Just saying, if things are like, this could sell at Halloween, but it also could sell other times of the year, you can change the title. But if it's your listing, in other words, I encourage you to make bundles because that's where it's at, y'all. Um, candy of course we sell candy at halloween right <clears throat> now of course with candy if you guys are new you know that you cannot sell meltable candy in any form until after 
October 1st, that's the Amazon rules. October 1st or May 1st, you can send in what they consider meltable. Now that's kind of an, anything chocolate, obviously, but that's also um, subjective. Uh, so gummy worms melt in Arizona, but they don't melt in Michigan like ever. So, you know, it's one of those things that you have to think about doing. Um, so send in chocolate. I mean, like at the ready, like October 1st. Now, someone asked me the other day, um, if you can send it in early and then wait for it to go live, well, Amazon immediately puts it in like the inactive category and they get mad at you for sending it in early because they really don't want it in their warehouses before October 1st. There's a reason for that. So unfortunately, some people break the rules, but I suggest not making it. They won't even allow you to list some of the things that are already flagged for being multiple. Um, until October 1st. So just follow the rules. You're not any farther behind than anybody else. Everyone else has to wait their turn as well. So send in your chocolate and your meltables for October 1st. Now you can merge and fulfill those early if you want to, but again, use your own personal judgment. If that's left on somebody's porch in Florida, uh, what are the chances of it surviving? Ask Michelle. She'll tell you it probably won't. I wouldn't know because I don't live in Florida. But um, seasonal flavors of candy. So you're talking, you know, what what candy? Name name a candy you think of when, when it comes to Halloween. Like, hit me up in the chat here. Let's just talk about it. Um, there's seasonal candies that you think about for sure. Let me ask any candy corn. That's what I was going to say. That's my number one. I'm a number one fan. Has anybody here eaten candy corn in the last three months? Honestly, anyone? Okay, I would. Seriously. <laughs> nerds, like little nerds boxes. Yes. Candy corn, yuck, Amy. I'm sorry. I love you, but no, we do not agree on this. I love candy corn. Like, too much. I don't eat very much of it because I'm diabetic and that's not good for me, but I do love me a handful of candy corn. Um, but yeah, we don't usually um, buy, think of buying candy corn in like May. Like it's just, I mean, some people do, but most of the time it's considered seasonal, right? Um, and so you have to think about those things that kind of come around once a year that's nostalgic for people. They want to stock up. What my, my parents used to dig out like the little like Mary Janes and things, Bitto honeys and stuff like that from like our candy. Because we were like, ew, what are those? And they're like, oh yeah, we used to buy these at, as penny candies at the, you know, dime store or whatever. <laughs> I used to make fun of them. Um, but seriously, there's nostalgic kind of candy that people think about for Halloween. Um, and though this is a time of year that it comes about. So stocking up on some of that stuff, especially candy that has a long shelf life, because after the hoopla is over, it goes on sale, or maybe it doesn't, you can still up your price because the stores aren't stocking all of this stuff year round. They have these big, huge bags, specialty candy for a time, and then it's back to the regular aisles. So different flavors, different things. Um, make a list. Do some research. Again, I'm not going to spout off all kinds of brands here, but you know how it is. Oh, and pumpkin spice everything, right? I mean, that's the big jokes. <laughs> peep ghosts. Yeah, peeps. You know, there's a peep for every occasion nowadays. It was used to be just for Easter, but not anymore. <laughs> um, so, you know, capitalize on that. Now, a thing I will let you in on is trick-or-treat bags. Um, what I mean by trick-or-treat, that's not what I meant to say. Favor bags for kids, treat bags. Okay, so this is like the new thing, at least in our elementary school. Um, it seems like all the moms, you know, they for Halloween, they're sending in treats for the kids. Like they really need any more candy on Halloween. Bless your hearts, but you know, it's cute, but still, it's like all this pressure on the rest of our moms. Boo bags, that's right, where you get a little bag and you put all kinds of treats in it, and then your kid passes one to all 32 of the rest of the kids in the class. Um, so those are things too. And you think about the big bags of candy and the varieties you might be putting in there. And maybe there's pencils or, you know, things like that. That's something that you can consider doing. Um, there's also fruit snacks, fruit roll-ups, cakes, cupcakes, cereal. Hello, cereal. Let's talk about Count Chocula, shall we? Or Boo Berry cereal. I mean, it comes around every year, you guys. Um, I'm sorry, I'm trying to read this chat at the same time. It's the only non-religious, non-politically incorrect holiday left, so they go all out. Okay. Yeah, it is definitely one of those. You leave it on your, oh yeah, the boo bags and people leave it on their, their friend's, you know, doorstep. Things like that. There's gift things. There's, oh, the sky's the limit, you guys. Okay, trick-or-treat bags. Kids carry trick-or-treat bags. But another thing is trick-or-treat related flashlights and glow sticks. 
flashlights and glow sticks. You see people, they want to be safe. It's dark at night. They want flashlights. They have those flashing necklaces so they can be like, oh yeah, there's Johnny, the 1400s Darth Vader that we see today. You know, he's got the flashing necklace so you know it's him like it, you know it gets dark and so you know kids wear glow stuff in order for to be see see and be seen it's a great idea capitalize on that maybe put one of those in your little um trick-or-treat favor bags whatever um but it's just one of those things to think about ahead of time um okay next is oh wait some questions what's your favorite way to package bundles if it's not a gift do you just package it in a box um we use Hold on. Excuse me, I'm going out of view for just a second. Here we go. This is one of my favorite ways to package bundles. This is a poly bubble mailer. Depends on what you're packaging. If it's a big deal, you want to put it, it doesn't fit in a poly bag, um, you know, regular size poly bag because it needs to be protected for some reason. We use these. They're acceptable by Amazon, we've asked, and although they're not see-through. Um, the description, you know, we put the sticker on the outside and they accept these from us and have for many years. Um, and it's an extra layer of protection. Boxes are great too. You know, you can use a box. It depends on if you can get the box. We recycle a lot of our boxes if we need to box things for bundles. We use boxes of all shapes and sizes. We've got tons from wholesalers. We can buy them. Uh, again, my favorite place to buy all this is eSupplyStore.com. Sorry, we don't have a discount with them yet. We don't have any affiliates at all. It's just where I've been purchasing my stuff for years. eSupplyStore.com. They have craft boxes. They have those bubble mailers. We buy our poly bags from Bubble Fast, and we do have an exclusive mommy income discount. Anything in the FBA supplies category on BubbleFast.com, use the code mommy income, you save 10%. Again, not an affiliate, just a discount for you, 10% off of anything there. So it doesn't have to be clear if it's in a bag or an envelope. Um, that would be questionable. They say it needs to be opaque. Um, but if it has bubble wrap on it, it's not opaque anyways, so they can't really see through it. And yes, you can use uh, these. Again, ask Amazon yourself. We asked them if these were approved and they told us yes, but your results may vary. Um, their rules talk about things being see-through. So you wanna use poly bags if possible. Some things need extra protection. If we think it needs extra protection, we actually emailed them a picture of one of these and asked if we could use it and we say, we tell them this, there's lingo is very important with Amazon. It will better arrive to the customer undamaged if we use extra bubble protection such as envelopes like these and they approve me. So that's your results may vary. That was probably five or six years ago we asked that um, and we still send them not a lot, but we send things that need to be protected in the bubble mailers. And boxes, of course, make sure you put stickers on them. Do not separate. Does Amazon avoid sending multiples to warehouses where it's cooler? I wouldn't even send a multiple to Florida warehouse in December. I don't know. Um, I, Amazon has to use their discretion. I sold candy chocolate for many, many years, and I haven't had any, maybe one or two things melt before. Okay, do you have to bundle stuff to make it profitable? Um, do you have to? No, there's a lot of things. Okay. Talking about bundles, there's reasons that we bundle things. And I know people are intimidated and scared to bundle, which you don't have to be because we taught you a course on this. You can go to mommyincome.com slash system to look at that or mommyincome.com slash bundles to look at what we teach about bundles. But the reality is, is that bundles protects you from a lot of other competition. Because someone's not going to be, I mean, you might have one copycat that jumps on your listing if maybe. Um, if they find it in time and they find all the right stuff and everything else. But the thing is, is that it, things are competitive and you want to make sure you're offering something that people want. So using Jungle Scout or using Merchant Words to search what other people are searching for, give the people what the people want to buy and put that in a pretty package better for them. I personally think bundles are better because people are all about convenience. They want to buy everything together. But do, does it have to be profitable that way? No. Um, I challenge someone to list something that's like not already on Amazon. You scan it somewhere and it doesn't, excuse me, doesn't come up and it's like, okay, doll body parts for haunted houses. Why can't I get over this? Um, and list it for sale on Amazon. I don't know how many of those you're actually going to find, but if you do, 
um, see what happens. See if someone buys it. Like one of the greatest things about Amazon, you can bring a new product to market and see if it becomes popular. You don't always have to just follow the crowd. Yes, it's a little bit risky. Yes, you're going to lose some money maybe if you don't do research or something just happens. We, lo we lose money a lot, not a lot, often enough to learn from our mistakes um, and to really look at things differently because we're willing to take the risk. I'm willing to dump $250 at a brand new wholesaler to make a bundle um, based on my research, not based on what I think is cool, but based this all that I'm giving you today is all based on research. Uh, believe it or not, Amy and I spend a good chunk of time making sure we give you the most accurate, up-to-date information available to you so that you can make profit on Amazon. Um, so we look this stuff up. We look at statistics. We look at, are, is what we're saying to you correct? Um, and we look at all these things and we try to make sure we're up to date on, you know, listing restrictions, which we know are lighting these days and things like that. So um, we're trying to give you all kinds of information. There's no excuses. If you sold lights last year and Amazon says no this year, look at all the rest of the stuff we already talked about that you can sell. There's not excuses. You can, pro you can participate in Halloween, sell something else. Love you, but that's the truth. Um, so there's that. But, you know, you don't have to do bundles to be profitable. We prefer bundles because we like to be profitable and we don't like people copying off of us. Um, so, you know, when it happens, we still get copied and have to throw people off of our listings and tell them they don't have their special packaging and things like that. But, you know, it's le less of a fight than fighting with 15 other sellers saying, selling the same thing. Um, so try it out and keep trying it and, and keep doing the research. Don't try it out like, oh, this is kind of cool. I think I'll go with that. I think I'll go with that once I do my research. That's what I do. I see something cool and I'm like, oh, I bet that would sell really good. And then I look it up on Amazon and it does sell really good plus this, this, and this separately. So then I put it together. So that's one of the things that I, you know, you think about with that. Um, and so let's see, okay, moving on to the next category. Pumpkin carving supplies. Okay, so you heard me say this earlier, right? That on the chart that I showed you, the percentage of people that that um, car will carve a pumpkin, 45.5% of people that celebrate Halloween will be carving a pumpkin. Did you know this? That's a lot of people. A lot of people celebrate Halloween and 45% of them are gonna carve a, car carve a pumpkin. So what does this mean for you? Fill in the blank, you guys. Money, of course, profit. Knife kits. Now, I don't mean, you know, if you're going to sell knives on Amazon, make sure that you're packaging them properly. I actually sold kitchen knives for a while, and as long as they were boxed properly, Amazon didn't have issues. There's rules about knives. You know, you're just going to send in one big, long cleaver knife, whatever. Pumpkin face painting accessories, or like I've seen them put like ears and eyes because kids don't want to carve them or whatever. Pumpkin paints and stickers and kits for larger groups, okay? So in preschool, how many times have you seen like the pumpkin painting, carving like extravaganza where like 14 preschoolers get together and carve a pumpkin? <laughs> yeah, it sounds like a disaster, right? <laughs> <laughs> been there um but they like to paint them instead and now they have stickers and stencils and special brushes and special have you seen those people that carve like on the outside of them with like these special tools to make them like they don't actually carve into it and then well they carve it out the middle but then you know they're like these scenes they're beautiful awesome pictures i mean people make a big deal out of this 45 percent of people apparently are going to be doing that so what can you help them out with paint candles flickerless lightless flameless finally i get the right word flameless candles to put inside the pumpkin so they stay lit all night without getting all gross there's even pumpkin preservation kits so that your beautiful pumpkin can last longer than two weeks outside without getting all crusty um sharpies markers people like to paint on them there's sticker you know all the stuff look at pumpkin carving supplies and see what kind of awesomeness you can put together. Because how many times are you going to carve one pumpkin? In our family, we carve five. So we all can't use the same knife, right? We all can't use the same kit. So how many kits do we need? You get the idea? Pumpkin carving kits for families of four. You're welcome. Um, I don't know. I'm making that up. But that's a bundle idea for you. Give it a try. See what happens. Bum pumpkin carving kit for a crowd. Uh, I don't know. But there, there there's that. Ah, this goes by way too fast. There's just so much information in here. I could give you the moon. Oh, okay, so give me. All right. 
where to buy all these goodies. Wholesale. I know a lot of you guys aren't in wholesale yet, but there's still time. You could look it up. You could try. You might hurry because, again, from the time you order to the time it shows up to your house is usually 10 days. And then you've got to prep it and send it out to Amazon, which is another 10 days. And what puts us at, that would be September 4th by then. So, yeah, if you did it tomorrow, um, there's still time. But we're talking dollar stores, Dollar Tree, Dollar General, General Family Dollar, 99 cent stores, things like that. Discount stores. Big Lots, Marshalls, Ollie's, places like that that have, look for coupons. Look for like Ollie's two or three times a year. Um, two or three times a year in Ollie, they have 15% um, off your entire purchase. They usually do once before Christmas, once during Christmas, afterwards. They just had one, I think, in May. Um, if you have Ollie's around you, you know, look for those coupons. Sign up for their emails. Sign up for their, their rewards programs and their mail. Those coupons plus tax exempt at Ollie's, big money grocery items, toys, housewares. I, when I was in retail arbitrage, I went to Ali more than most stores on a regular basis. So make sure you do that. Craft stores, especially we talked about do it yourself, create your own things like that. Michael's Joanne fabrics, Ho Hobby Lobby. Um, let's see all major retailers, Walgreens, Walmart, Target, CVS, um, combine different things from different places if you're doing retail arbitrage, online arbitrage. You can search eBay and sell on Amazon if it's brand new. And of course, again, wholesale, there's still opportunities. But look now, if you know you're going to get into wholesale in 2018 and that's on your Amazon bucket list for next year, um, look at stuff now. Start doing your research now. How do you do that? Open a Google Doc, put it Hall if Halloween ideas on it, and start putting ASINs in there. ASINs that you want to follow, ASINs that you want to track, put track them in Keepa, track them in Camel, track them on Jungle Scout, look at things so that maybe you're missing the boat this year because you don't have, I don't know why you don't have wholesale accounts yet. You should, I think you should. We're going to talk more about that next week when we talk about RA. We're talking about retail arbitrage next week, by the way. Is retail arbitrage dead? We're going to talk about it because there's some big things surrounding all that. So yeah, it's all about data and it's all about tracking these things. So if you're not ready for wholesale yet, maybe next year you can be ready. So just different things to look at. It's about research. You guys, I wish, I really wish for your sake that I could create this magic formula for you that you could, wouldn't have to do any research and you could just go out and do it and that everyone could create your own pretty little list that I could hand to each every one of you and say, you go by this, you go by this, you go by this, here's how you create your listing. Um, we kind of do do that, we teach you classes. <laughs> but you know, I wish it was just as easy as just like walking in and buying whatever you want and you know, hoping for the best. It takes a little bit of work. It's a business, it takes work. Um, do you believe it or not, Walmart and Walgreens and big stores like that, they do research before they make purchases too. They look at what's trending and they try to stock up on the newest movie stuff and toys and things like that that are coming out. They track all this months and months and months ahead of time. So make sure that you're doing that as well and that there's still time. It is August 14th right now. You have plenty of time to look at stuff and start selling stuff in. Do some research. Don't be afraid to pull the trigger and send stuff in. It's Halloween. You've got to be able to sell stuff. And my final tips come to you here. It's making bundles and kits. We've already talked about that. If you don't know how to make bundles and kits, you go, you know, we have a class about that. You can take our wholesale bundles class. You can take just the bundles class and just learn how to bundle and putting stuff together. It helps with competition. It also helps um, make convenience and value for your customer. That's what bundles are really about, making a valuable purchase for your customer. Use coupons and deals. Watch for coupons in the mail. If you only have a small budget, you want to make sure you're using some coupons. You know, people do deals. And you want to make sure, and also, extra tips, be first to the marketplace. The longer your listing is there, the more often people are going to see it. So makeup and things like that. Watch for hazmat on makeup. Maybe jump on listings that are already there or make sure. Here's the key to hazmat. 
make sure you have the MSDS sheet that you send in or have it ready so that Amazon, when they put it in hazmat review, you give them the MSDS sheet on your item, make sure you keep the UPC code or take a picture of it or something like that if it's an RA item and send that to them. All the manufacturers have to manufacture these MSDS sheets. You send them to Amazon and say, here's the ingredients and they can either release it or tell you, sorry, one of these ingredients is hazmat. So make sure you have those. Use coupons and deals and buy enough on OA if you are to get free shipping. Um, that's a sweet spot. There's recently, I met a supplier, which I love their stuff, but they don't have free freight like at all like at any price point, which makes me sad and makes me negotiable. Okay, SDS, thank you. They're not called MSDS, they're just called SDS sheets. Okay, thanks for the correction there. Um, that's what you use in order to get ingredients list and hazmat list reviews for Amazon. They will sometimes ask for them. Um, the free shipping. Get enough to get free shipping. If it's $75 or more and you get free shipping, it's worth it to pay the extra, to get the extra inventory to get free shipping. Another last and final thing we're gonna talk about because I know I'm surprised it hasn't come up yet is um, return woes, right? People are like, oh my gosh, I sell a Halloween costume and then the very next day someone returns it. Wah, wah, wah. Um, this is one of the reasons why stores say the costumes are final sale because they know all too well that somebody buys a Halloween costume for 50 bucks, wear it for two hours, and want to return it. And some stores always take it back for whatever reason. Amazon seems to be kind of one of those people. Um, so that's on you if you really think that. I've been selling costumes for a while. Last year I sold hundreds of costumes, and I think I got four returns. All of them, unfortunately, were adult costumes that were all $70 to $80. So apparently kids' costumes aren't as shady as adult costumes. But the thing is, is if they send them back, they're in decent condition. I'm selling them on eBay this year. So it's a double whammy. I guess I sold it to them and got some, you know, whatever. But there are certain things you can do about that. If you really think that someone's abusing the return policy, you can, in fact, take a picture of the item once you receive it back send it to Amazon, say it had been damaged, if it has. I'm not asking you to lie to them. I'm saying that overlook it and say somebody really wore this and they used it for one day on Halloween and they return it and just state your case. What's the worst that can happen? You're already out the money at this point. And if they say no, then they say no. If they say yes, then you got your money back. So it's always worth opening a case. I tell this to people all the time. Open a case, open a case, open a case. If you have a question and you think Seller Central is being unfair, Open a case about it, but prove your stance. Take pictures of your item that you think the sweater was ruined and snagged or they washed it and shrunk it four sizes or whatever else. Plead your case. Worst thing Amazon can say is no. Best that they can say is you get your money back and they eat it instead of you. So there's that. Although we like to fight City Hall, is what we call it, fighting Amazon. It's their policies. Their, the truth is they're probably not going to deny any return. Most people are honest. Most people are going to wear it once and just unfortunately sell it in their garage sale next year or something else. Most people don't really abuse the system. But if you're worried about it, then maybe not sell costumes. Maybe don't sell something that's going to be returned like that or have a plan to flip it on eBay next year or sell it yourself at a garage sale or donate it to, you know, Goodwill or something. But have a plan in place for reselling something if something goes wrong or write it off as a loss. You can write lo business losses off on your taxes, and you should be doing that. Um, it's a loss. You paid for something, customer ruined or damaged it, can't return it back to the manufacturer. You took a loss. It's a write-off on your taxes. So document it and move along. I know that no nobody likes to hear that. I like to tell you the truth because that's business. Walmart does not cry every single time somebody brings something back to them and, and returns it because they have a plan in place to deal with returns. It's not gonna hurt them bottom line in the long run. Well, yeah, because they're Walmart. It might hurt your bottom line for a minute, but in general, you have to get used to the fact that you are in retail and they're going to be returns. Now, if you think someone's being dishonest, you have the right to argue your case, but because it's Amazon's platform, you may not win. And there's that. It's cost of doing business, absolutely. So, wow, it's literally 10 o'clock. I did all that without Amy. I miss Amy. I'm sorry, Amy, you're not here. Um, no, I hope you guys got some really good ideas out of that. Don't forget to 
the Facebook group, right? This. Here's the scoop about Q4. Last year, Amazon closed the doors to new sellers on October 10th. No joke. Without warning, they sent an email out to everybody, Amazon sellers, and they said, if you have not sent in your first shipment already, you are closed until December 19th. Everyone was like, oh, Amazon legit closed their doors to new sellers. Now, if you were a seller, but you hadn't sent in a shipment yet, you didn't count. That means that you have to send in your shipment. Last year, it was October 10th. They closed the door on Q4 to people. Please don't let that happen to you. Send your shipment in first. Now, if you've never done this, get in now. Because um, that happened last year, and we had a lot of sad people. They were coming into the Mommy Income Facebook group, and they're like, I can't send in a shipment. I'm missing out on Q4. We felt so bad for them, but there's nothing we can do. Um, don't let that happen to you. Uh, get in now. Send in your first shipment, even if it's like a box of books that are going to like make you lose money or something. Um, if you don't know how to start your Amazon business, or you tell people about that, too. Like, if you have friends that are like on the fence, um, yeah, see, it happened to somebody that's sitting right here right now. Missed it by one day, Kathy Young from last year. This is legit, people. I don't make this stuff up. Um, if you know somebody on the fence or whatever, um, we have our Start FBA Today course that will get you in. It will get you started up and sending in your first shipment so you don't miss out on Q4. You've got about four or five weeks before that starts to really happen. So don't let that happen to you. Don't be on the fence. If you're still just researching, I just gave you a whole bunch of stuff that you can go buy and sell like as soon as you sign up. Like there's no excuses now. Go shopping. Um, get a box in because then you're not shut out on Q4. And please don't let that happen. If you're getting into our Facebook group, please answer the questions. That's how you get in. Use your code word, Halloween. Otherwise, we're going to see you next week on the 21st where we're going to talk about is retail arbitrage dead? Is retail arbitrage no longer a business model? We'll, we're going to talk about it and we're going to inform you on what we think. And of course, it's our opinion. Fly to fly pull if you want. Um, Amy will be back next week. Thank God. Um, and we will just, we're happy to have you. Code words, Halloween. Um, anything else you guys need, hit us up on the Facebook page, Facebook group, you know, Telegram, Twitter, Instagram, wherever else you can find us, YouTube. Um, we thank you and appreciate you for coming and stopping by and seeing the show. And stay tuned for your replay and your show notes at mommyincome.com slash Halloween. And we'll see you next week. Thanks, everyone.